Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the Jordan Maxwell Show. I'm your guest host, Jeffrey Matt, and uh, unfortunately, Jordan is not available this evening. So again, I have another opportunity to fill in for him, which I consider it an honor. I want to uh, extend my thanks to American Freedom Radio for many, many reasons, the owners, the crew, uh, and the network itself, and uh, the opportunity that American Freedom Radio has provided me as well. So if you see an opportunity, uh, you know, sign up if you if you have an oper- if you're even able to make a donation and support American Freedom Radio, uh, please uh, keep that in mind as well because it is uh, it, it keeps going because of you, the listener. So, and the same thing goes for Jordan. Jordan's work is very important, and at at his age, uh, he needs all the support he can get to continue his work at a very critical juncture in human history. If you want to learn more about Jordan Maxwell's work, if you're new to Jordan Maxwell, wow, you're in for a treat. Uh, His website is jordanmaxwellshow.com, just jordanmaxwellshow.com. And if you're interested in his research beyond just the podcast on that page, there's another link on there. It's for a research society. So you can click on that. And it's a one-time fee. It's $30, uh, and it's a lifetime membership. And I can assure you it's worth every penny. As a matter of fact, personally, I think it's worth a lot more than $30. But uh, he's the man, and uh, I think it's an incredible way to show that you respect and uh, his work, his person, and also to help him continue being able to put out just uh, – just amazing material. He's, he really is a master teacher, at least in my opinion. And I think most of the listenership feels the same way as well. So tonight, I'm going to do, for me, it's a first on American Freedom Radio in, in 2019. And I'm very pleased to have the opportunity to do a visual vi- a video slide presentation that I can describe uh, what some of the work and research I've been doing over many, many years, but now I've been consolidated on my website. And the tonight's topic is going to be one that really fascinated me. It's how the United States, I've always seen the United States as a really a great place. I love the people. Uh, The dynamics of the U.S. is if you travel to different parts of the U.S., it's really cool. You can go to the Southwest, the Northeast. Uh, Florida, Texas, I mean, just on and on, Uh, North Dakota, Idaho, wherever you are, America's pretty good. But I never was taught in school a lot about the United Nations. And the United Nations is something that has a very, you know, clean record. Uh, They're peacekeepers. All they do is they hunt down bad behavior of the other nations and they try to uh, be a, a negotiator, intermediary, and all this stuff. But tonight, I want to uh, show a basically what I think is actually happening in the U.S. And the U.S. is not really a nation. It's actually a corporation. And this corporation, it's very important that people understand that, that this corporation is understood for what it is. And how the United Nations has merged with the U.S. Inc. And so this is something I want to talk about tonight. Now, you can follow along, obviously, with the video. But let's say after this presentation, you want to go back and look at some of the pictures. You want to listen back to the archives, to American Freedom Radio. But if you want to come visit my research on my website, it's very simple. It's jeffreymatt.com. That's J E F F. R E Y M A T T E dot com. On the main home page, you just have to scroll down, uh, you know, just a little bit, and you'll see there are uh, slideshows. And the second one is called Has the U.S. Corporation Merged with the United Nations? So this is something that is. I'm not happy about having to talk about this subject because if I'm accurate in this research, it means that the United States is the pound, it has become the front. Like, you know, when you go to a strip mall, you see the front of the store, 
and it tells you the name of the store. Example, in the United States, there's a, a wireless carrier. It was called Singular Wireless. If you lived in the U.S., you'll know what I'm talking about. If you live outside the U.S., you live in Australia, New Zealand, Europe, anywhere else, think of a company that was eventually bought out by another company, but they kept their name. They kept their name. They didn't d disappear, dissolve, or eliminate the name of that brand because the brand was very powerful. So I think that the United Nations has been growing inside the U.S. Incorporated for many, many, many decades, at minimum 70 years. For the UN, it's, it's about 70 plus years. But actually, it's been going on since the, the, the 1800s, the late 1800s. So, but I don't want to, I don't want to diverge too much. I want to stick with the U.S. Incorporated, which supposedly was, uh, became a corporation in 1871 in Delaware. You guys can look that up on the internet. And basically, it's like a post-Civil War resolution. And then a lot of changes came. The 14th Amendment, slavery is supposedly abolished. And, uh, you know, that, that's something that's very important to keep in mind, that it may not actually be the case. Slavery has not really disappeared. It's just become more palatable for a lot of people. Now... As you can see in the first picture here that I have, it's a it's two flags. It's the U.S. flag and the United Nations flag, and there is a partnership, and they are connected. So this is something that's very important to keep in mind. And if you notice, the United Nations, you know, even the windows on the building in New York City, where the Rockefellers donated the land, the the Rockefeller family. For those of you who aren't familiar, it's a very powerful family. They got involved with oil and helped start a large international conglomerate, large corporation called Standard Oil. It became a monopoly. It was broken down. And the power of this corporation has never really gone away. It's still it's just broken up into pieces. It still doesn't mean it's not extremely powerful. And they gave the land, the Rockefeller family gave the land for the headquarters of the United Nations in New York City. So for those of you who who have heard of sovereign city states like Washington DC with those three red stars on their flag there are three city states the the city the city of London which is different than Westminster a lot of people mistake Westminster as London but there's the city of London that's a city state and then there's the Vatican City which is another state it's a sovereign state and so the Vatican most people have heard of the Vatican these are the three city states and from my understanding, those three stars on the Washington, D.C. flag represent those three city-states. And it's basically a power, a triune, and they all have different roles. So the U.N. is a corporate birth to help dissolve the United States, Inc. What will you not, well, the way I grew up understanding what the United States is all about, and they use the color light blue, baby blue, powder blue, crystal blue. In the 1968, there was a, a, a music song that came out by Tommy uh, and the Shondells. I think it's Tommy James and the Shondells. It's called Crystal Blue Persuasion. And I have to hand this, the, this particular piece of information to Jordan Maxwell, who helped me understand the connection between Crystal Blue Persuasion and world communism. And so on my video page, you'll see the video with the lyrics. And it, it really, if you have a discerning eye, which I know this uh, listenership does, you'll start to be able to see the connections of how Crystal Blue Persuasion has made a severe impact around the world. Most people assume communism with the Reds. But, you know, if you're an elitist and you have unlimited money, you're not going to limit yourself to one color. And while everybody's looking for the Reds, the crystal blue persuasion is moving is, is basically moving around the world. And so what happened is to grow the United Nations, there has to be a lot of problems. That's how the credibility of the United Nations grows. 
you've got to have a lot of problems. And so they can come in with the solution. They can come in with the council meetings. They can come in with the peacekeeping talks. They can create a peacekeeping military force or a police force, which I grew up in high school being taught that there, there is no UN army. And I, I could do a whole presentation on that some other time explaining and showing to you, not Jeffrey Matt's opinion, not Jeffrey Matt's wishful thinking, that there is a world army. It exists already. It's not the U.S., it's the U.N. And the U.N. is still at that stage where it hasn't completely 100% taken over uh, the U.S. Inc. So there's still a little bit of hope left that the U.S. can be preserved. The U.S. has been used as a storefront to be the bully for the world for many, many decades. So a lot of countries really don't like the U.S. They don't appreciate the policy. They don't appreciate maybe how some of the, the foreign policies executed. The, the reason why is because the U.S. doesn't have full control over all the aspects of its own sovereignty because it's part of the United Nations and it's been growing in through the U.S., over the last seven decades. If you have unlimited funds and you have the blessing from the, the Vatican to go ahead and proceed with this, of course it's gonna, uh, you know, you're gonna have what George Bush Sr. called a new world order where there's a credible United Nations can be at the forefront. Most people forget that last part. They just hear the new world order and they think it's only Satanism and it's only devil worshipers. That's a ruse to trick and that tricks lots and lots of people and i'm not saying that, that that there aren't there aren't demonic forces and there aren't people who believe in satanism and all that but what i'm talking about my angle and my research and my approach tonight is to look at this as a simple business model stay away from the hate stay away from all the judgment look at it for what it is a scientist in a laboratory doesn't cry when liquid evaporates out of a, a, a tube and then goes through the spiral tube and, and then condenses through and then drips back down to the other flask and then it reappears and the liquid reappears in the other tube and then the, the scientist isn't clapping for joy on the other side. A scientist observes, evaluates, takes notes and discerns. And so this is the, the approach I'm trying to take. Double check everything I say don't take anything I say for granted. The reason why I say that is because you don't know me personally. If you spent time with me enough time, you'd realize I'm doing this to try to be as honest as possible. If I make a mistake, I will make a correction. But the real power is not in the information I'm sharing with you tonight. The real power is you. You're the individual who can say, is there something to this? If I double check it, does it stand on its own two feet? Does it make sense? Does it fit common sense? Does it fit logic? And hopefully, in this case, it will. Now, if you're going to build a world government, you got to go with the, the strongest nation known to all the people, whether you can read or write or you can't read and write. Everybody knew the U.S. was a big daddy. So let's set up the United Nations in New York City. And so you can see the crystal blue persuasion here with the UN blue flag. And I had a hard time finding this picture because there are nine shades of UN blue. I know possibly someone might say, well, I've seen uh, all these different, uh, you know, you can't just lump it all into one. That's not fair. That's not right. You're not thinking on your two feet, Jeffrey. Uh, there, you know, it's just one color and it's not everywhere. Well, look at this chart, the UN shades of blue. And so it was difficult to find this, not because there's being hidden. It's just, it's not popular. People are looking, you know, for entertainment and, uh, having fun and sports and all that. And there's nothing wrong with having fun, but if you have a little too much fun, you end up not paying your bills, you end up homeless, or you end up single, and uh, you don't have priorities and you don't become a responsible individual, you miss out on life. You miss out on all the wondrous potential of life. And so I have to do my homework and I have to show you, try to demonstrate to you that I tried to do mine so that you don't have to spend 18 years trying to figure this stuff out. You can spend an hour 
and there was almost no effort for you. Now, it's up to you to double check, as I mentioned earlier. So there are different, there's about nine shades of UN Blue for different aspects, different features, and different business branches of our world government, our new world order. Even U.S. law books, I mean, here's, here it is, lawyer's edition. I mean, this is not chance. This is not an accident. Now, if for anybody says, oh, I'm cherry picking, you just found one set of law books that has that blue on there. There are tens of thousands that don't. Well, here it is, the United States Code Service. First of all, this is the lawyer's edition. This is not uh, you know, the prisoner's uh, library edition. This is the lawyer's edition, and it is a code, and it is connected to the U.S. legal system. It's connected. It's, 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 it's like basically the best way I can say it is this two corporations, one is merging with the other, one is absorbing the other. And so the United Nations has been trying to completely dissolve and absorb and consume and, and digest and process and eliminate the U.S. Inc. So they have little codes. They put the color in for the certain people who are in the know. Maybe they're in a secret society. Maybe they work for different branches of government. Maybe they work in the military. Maybe they work in intelligence. But I've come to understand the trend because this is really – what I bring to the table. It's not necessarily just the information, it's pattern recognition. People who have been studying artificial intelligence, multiple doctorates, a lot of them will say, well, how do you describe intelligence? Pattern recognition is definitely one of the key factors that you can identify and you can hand, pick out what would you consider a form of intelligence. If you can pick out a pattern out of out of a whole bunch of, of, of images, you can see things that, that others can't. It's a form of intelligence, and that's what I'm trying to present to you today. So the U.S. legal system is connected as well. But it also is with the intelligence community. General Michael Hayden, I think he was the ex-CIA director and NSA director. I mean, he really, you know, he had one heck of a career, this man. And he was involved with helping start up what today we call Cyber Cyber Command. But before it became that, it was called the United States Joint Forces Command. And if you look at the, the picture of the United States, you'll see that it's not red, white, and blue, but it's baby blue. It's UN blue. That's not an accident. That's not somebody slipping and falling onto the mouse and accidentally hitting the wrong color on paint. And Microsoft Paint. That's not what's happening here. This is not by accident. And neither is it an accident for the National Security Agency. This is not somebody who slipped and fell uh, in, in the room and accidentally knocked over the can of baby boop you know, paint on making this flag for the, United, uh, for the National Security Agency. So there's something to this, but maybe I'm cherry picking. Let's keep, let's keep going. Here's one of the signs that's outside of one of their locations. And if you notice, the inner uh, rectangle here is baby blue. Again, this is not cherry picking. This is a pattern. And if you keep going, here's what I was talking about. That joint command there, it turns into U.S. Cyber Command. See that baby blue there? But if you think it's just uh, the NSA, no, it's actually the CIA as well. If you want to join the CIA and you want to get a career or an internship, you absolutely can. You can sign up. You can go through the process. You can respect all their rules and regulations. But just to let you know, their guiding process, they let you know on a YouTube page and all their positions are located in the Washington, D.C. area. Well, it's in crystal blue. Is that is that an accident? I really doubt it. I think if there's something to this, uh, and it's not by chance. So it, it, I did a, a, a whole – it took me almost about eight years to create an international color code system. I had to reverse engineer it off of the United States uh, uh, 
highway system, the interstate highway system. And that's how I was able to determine all the different colors, what they mean down to one word. And when I eliminated all the, the colors, this is one color I couldn't figure out. Well, this is what the elitists, the internationalists, globalists have decided to use. And it's the same color for the UN, so it all fits into place. So even on their YouTube page, if you want to go through the application process, you can do so. And it's the same thing there as well. Uh, even the FBI. Now, the FBI has been around, I think, since 1908, and it was set up by uh, the nephew of, of Napoleon, Napoleon Bonaparte. Okay, and uh, one of his, uh, one of the most famous pictures of Napoleon is him on the, on a horse that's on his back, legs up in the air, uh, almost like in a vic victory stance. But there's a giant red flag around him, a red uh, cape. And Jordan had helped me understand that. The red flag is is something that the Jesuits were given by Jesus. And red flags are understood all over the place. Red flags uh, have usually been associated with the Jesuits, but at the same time, even the Pope had said that the communist regimes had stolen the red flag from them, and they, they create the reds. But the FBI, uh, because it's been around before the United Nations, you don't see the baby blue as much, right? Because it was there decades, 30, 40 years before the UN was founded. But they still have a few places they can do press releases where the background is baby blue, where the buildings are more recent. They're not built in the, four, the 30s and the 20s. And uh, so it's still there. And here's a, an interesting, this is very symbolic to me of an FBI office in, I think this is in Hawaii. And they have a blue panel on top of the logo, on top, or, or, or covering it up. You know, to me, it just screams the pattern recognition, but not everybody will see it. So this is why I'm doing the pictures so that you don't have to go through all the self-doubt that I did having nobody to, to question or confirm any of this with. This is all reverse engineered on my own. But I've learned from many people over the years, particularly Jordan, but many, many people over the years. And that's how I built up my capability of pattern recognition. And so that's how I'm able to find these examples. And here's another office where it's a more recent office. Again, this wasn't built in the 20s. And even the outside has sort of like a UN tint, you know, baby blue tint to it. Now, if you're in the intelligence community, there's even IARPA, and they use baby blue as well. So this is something that uh, I think is very important to keep in mind that it's not by chance. Okay. Intelligence, advanced research projects, activity. So they uh, take care of business. You know, they're interlinked with the, uh, the CIA and, and basically all intelligence that's operating in the United States. So here are some logos to help you understand that I just didn't, you know, pick this up out of nowhere. Here are technologies and companies that use it, that the military industrial complex uses. Even the brain initiative, when they want to uh, basically decode the brain and find out what's happening with the brain, they're using the color uh, quite regularly to help those who are in the know that you're joining this program and you have to follow the UN rules, basically. You want to be part of the New World Order? You want to be part of the United Nations? Uh, this is a color code scheme that most people overlook. When I was reverse engineering this color code scheme, nobody was interested in it. Everybody had some sort of story to tell me, I don't know, I don't believe you. You know, but now that I have something put together that makes sense, now they're interested. So I have to do all the hard work on, by myself. And I had to start looking at where some of these colors are coming from. Now, the founding fathers of the United States, there's a lot of controversy that Freemasons are automatically 100% all demonic. They're all demons. And they're all evil. And they're all coming out of the cesspool of hell. It's not the case. I've met people who have not been Freemasons the majority of their lives, 
and they're honest, integrity-filled individuals, and then they decide for some reason they decide to join because I guess they want something else in their life. It's not the case. It's a business model. Inside the Freemasons, inside them, that they can do stuff that nobody can, you can't find out what they're doing. And so Freemasonry has been getting a very difficult negative bad rap that it's just pure, pure evil. Now, I know I had to learn this the hard way. All the YouTube videos I've ever seen, all the stuff I've ever read about it, it's even when you're doing alternative learning, you have to take everything with a grain of salt, including my research, and think about it. Uh, if you've ever worked, I used to work in the cell phone industry. That doesn't mean I want everybody to get cancer. I want everybody to get sick and die. It means I have to pay the bills. So does, does that make me evil because I worked in the cell phone industry? No. I removed myself from that industry, and I tried to live a better life after I became aware of the situation. So it's the same, same thing with secret societies. The problem is the secret societies have been known to do extremely – subversive things, very damaging decisions that could hurt, you know, be detrimental to different groups or factions or even peoples or even countries. And so that's why the global elite really, really enjoyed going through secret societies because you can't figure out what they're doing. And they have people at the bottom going to chicken dinners uh, once or twice a month and they don't know what's going on and they're taking the heat. So uh, now I could go into a whole presentation about secret societies. I'm not promoting secret societies. I'm not saying that the best thing since sliced bread. What I'm saying is it's a business. And in that business, it's a, there's a club environment. But inside of that, there's a dark ribbon of people who aren't interested in the other $8 billion. They're interested in the business model of a, a new world order. And that color sometimes appears in different places that we didn't expect. And even with Air Force One, which has been baby blue since the 60s, since I think it was uh, President uh, JFK and his wife, they made up a nice propagandized story that she's the one who picked the color and all that. doesn't matter. If it's true, great. If it's, in, if it's not true, ultimately the end result – that's what business people want, and that's what shareholders want, and that's what people who are waiting for their check to be direct deposited after they work for two weeks. They don't care about the politics. Is it in my bank account? Yes or no. They want the, the hard truth. The hard truth is that the Air Force One is baby blue. Okay? So it's been a UN plane for, for, for seven, dec seven plus decades. So here are some examples of that. This is very important to keep in mind. That the United States has been has a dual, just like you have a left side of your body and a right side, it's been used to create and to uh, to uh, basically implement the UN around the world because its headquarters in New York City, and to set up the world government in a way that's in a corporate environment. Okay, I'm not talking about Satanism. I'm not talking about the devil. I'm talking about a business, a company. Now, I met somebody a long time ago who worked for the United Nations, and that individual paid no income tax. And I was wondering, my gosh, why do I, why would I even bother getting a regular job if I could just go work for the UN and never pay taxes the rest of my life? And you know, I was never had, I never had the chance to do that. And I'm sort of now I think about, it, I look back on it. Uh, I, I, I mean, I never would have known. But if I hadn't done my own homework and met in, impressive people throughout the, the, the last uh, almost two decades, especially with Jordan, none of this awareness would have been available to me if I hadn't believed in myself and I hadn't tried to surround myself with brilliant minds and listen. I didn't say hardly a word around Jordan for about 11 years. I mean, and we, we talked and stuff, but whenever I met other people around him, I just let them talk. You know, they're the ones who are experts in this and that. And I, I did all the listening. And so when you put it all together, it only took me 17 years. Uh, you get these examples that's, that show a pattern. So here's the Air Force One even further back. 
Now here's uh, JFK. You know, this isn't Jeffrey Matt wishful thinking. This is this is you know in your face. Even the United States government uses on their main website they use baby blue. You know, here it is. You can't get more in your face than that. The Department of Commerce. Now I know there's different versions of the logo, but they have this version available, readily available on many many in many formats. And so I'm pointing this out because they don't make mistakes. They don't make mistakes. They get what they want. They get what they paid for. I think even in the the presentation that Jordan Maxwell did called uh, Matrix of Power, you know, he said something about the education system. They pay what they get for. If your education uh, leaves you uh, unable to understand what's happening in the world, it's because that's what they paid for. So these are elements of this and the Department of the Treasury. You see the UN blue there? I didn't make this up. It's there in your face. It's there in my face. Even the Committee on the Ways and Means, he said, oh, there's no UN blue there, but on their website, there it is, on the top. And whenever you're dealing with something, it's on the top. Usually it has priority, it takes precedence, so the UN blue can take precedence there. So you know, these are kind of things that are being put into place that you and I may or may not be aware of. Even with the Environmental Protection Agency, uh, people will say, well, that's just, you know, that's just how it is. Uh, you know, they've got to pick a color for the sky. You can't just uh, put purple sky. You've got to put baby blue. But let's keep going. I think that was also set up during the Nixon era and George Bush senior was the UN ambassador at the same time and he, uh, he was there when they did the vote to choose which of the two governments in China was going to be acknowledged either the Republic of China and Taiwan or the People's Republic which is the Communist Party and so just by magical chance it all was set up and communism was launched and, and, and recognized not launched it was recognized by the UN as the government of choice. So Tricky Dick or Nixon was hard at work, whether he understood it or not. But the EPA budget here, even in their own literature, not Jeffrey Matt's literature, their own literature, they use the baby blue color for federal spending. Okay? So the Environmental Defense Fund, it's there as well. And uh, they, they, they put it in there everywhere. Even the uh, National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, people say, well, you know, you can't get around it. You've got to put sky blue there, you know, or ocean blue. But there's another example of that. The Bureau of Ocean Energy Management. So these are all examples of how baby blue is encoded into your psyche, encoded through advertising and marketing and through distribution internationally where you can't really pin it all together. You can't really see the pattern because you look and I look at tens of thousands of images a day through magazines, through newspapers, through television, through the internet, through YouTube, through uh, bulletin boards at your job, at school, university, high school, clubs, Boy Scouts, on and on and on. So you can't see the pattern. I'm removing everything out of the way, and I'm providing you with an example of this pattern. The U.S. military, how interesting, the Department of History, to teach history for the profession of, of arms. Now, there's two eagles there. I wonder what that's all about. I'll talk about that in another presentation. But you see the baby blue? There it is, folks. Department of Defense. In your face. There it is. Uh, the Defense Threat Reduction Agency. Same thing. Uh, Coast Guard. Same thing. Air Force. You know, it just keeps going and going and going. It's just never ending. And so these are all examples that people may or may not have made the connection because nobody's spending time on colors. 
right? People have, you know, I always respect people who go out and do the hard, hard work to get a degree because it is a lot, a lot of hard work. It's a lot of sacrifice. There's a lot of stress. And if you get it, you kudos to you for getting a degree. But at the same time, some people who get these educations in the business world, they become arrogant and they have this top-down mindset. I have a degree or you don't, or I have two degrees and you only have one. I have a master's, you only have a bachelor's. I have a PhD, and so on and so forth. And you can't ask some of these people questions. And when you ask them a question about color, they don't know about it. It's the wrong question to ask. You ask someone who has that high level of education, they have no clue. It makes them uncomfortable because they don't know what to answer. So they give you a shutdown answer. Uh, that's not something you should ask. There's a time and a place, so on and so forth. So you get never really get to learn through your work environment. If you're in the military, the chances of you finding this out are so small. You know, it's like finding a unicorn. Good luck. You have to be outside the box. You have to think uh, even the, the, the hiring process at Microsoft up in Redmond, they do lateral thinking. They have uh, outside the box uh, lateral thinking interviews. And this is the kind of stuff that they would want people to think outside the box. This is the kind of thing. Uh, seeing patterns that aren't there, understanding problems from a different perspective, determining and discerning th things based on little little data, seeing stuff that other people can't. Well, Goldman Sachs, let's look at the banking issue, the uh, banking information. And we might have to do a second hour to complete this. So uh, it's it's going to be something I want to continue in the second hour. But Goldman Sachs is one of the biggest banks in the world, one of the most recognized banks in the world. And guess what? It's a United Nations Foundation partner. And so they have the UN Blue. And uh, so this is uh, sort of like an overt bank. It's like one of the banks that's o that's okay with saying, I'm with the UN. I'm with them. I'm using their colors. I'm their partner. I'm on their website saying I'm their partner. There's no mystery. It's in your face. So this is something else. But if we keep going through the financial arena, you'll see that even the NASDAQ is using baby blue. And if you want to do business in the United States, incorporated, well, we're going to use that. Even in politics, you know, Obama, he was a big daddy on this. Big, big daddy. And he believes in communism. I have never met him personally, and I'm sure that that man is a very charismatic, easygoing guy. But whoever he authorized to create his campaign also understands this color code and understands the United Nations and understands constitutional, and he understands the game. And he's not using this baby blue by by sheer chance and by accident. Nobody fell on a can of blue, baby blue paint fell all over this. Change we need. Change. So what are we changing exactly? Are we changing America? Are we dissolving the United States Incorporated so that it becomes so weak and the education system becomes common core? which is basically, I'm sure, all around the world, especially the Commonwealth in particular. If you see a, pol a politician in your country, including New Zealand, including England, Theresa May uh, with the Brexit, her campaign is peppered with baby blue everywhere. So somebody wasn't happy with Brexit. She got in, and what she did is she created a huge, ginormous two-year fumble. Why? Is it because she doesn't know what she's doing? Of course she knows what she's doing. She is part of the gang that doesn't want sovereignty. She wants the world system to be put into place. So if, it, if the vote went through, she had two years to fumble the ball. And she did fumble the ball. And the colors, you know, have you ever seen the, the movies? It's called Colors with, um, I forget the actor's name. But anyways, there are gangs, street gangs that have colors. Well, why don't politicians? They have colors, too. Now, I'm not saying that all the other political parties who do not use this color are somehow lily white and they have uh, nothing, uh, nothing's reproachable and all this stuff. I'm just letting you know that this is the, 
this is the gang that's a dominant gang, UN, that's willing to be overt, not covert, overt, meaning out in the open. They've got to get this color out in the open more and more so people are conditioned to see it. I've seen it a thousand times. It's like seeing violence on TV. If you've seen enough violence on TV, you become desensitized. So this is the party in, in the Commonwealth world. It's called conservatives. In the United States, it's called Democrats. So they're using the baby blues. So that's the one. Let's check out. Oh, wow. You know that oval behind Obama's head? That used to be black. But just a few years ago, it was changed over to baby blue. Most people never even paid attention to it. I bet you people even in the White House didn't even know the significance of that change. Now, I can't know that for sure, but it wouldn't surprise me that some people don't have a clue. But Obama does. He knows all about it. So he's into that, and he's just basically a gentleman who probably is a good man on a personal individual level but has chosen a business model and chosen a gang that is not necessarily favorable for 8 billion people. So I've come – this is a very difficult lesson I had to learn. When I tried to learn about stuff, oh my gosh, I don't like this. So that means they're all bad. No. I've met good people who've made bad decisions. I've met excellent people who've made horrible choices and then they've recovered or people who – are just simply bad altogether. I have to judge each person individually. Even if they're with something I don't agree with, I've come to understand that everybody makes bad decisions and it doesn't make them the business model. They're supporting the business model. It doesn't make them the business model. So I always have to separate the person from the movement because the reason why I'm specifying this, I'm being very detailed about it, is because I want to talk about a solution. I want to talk about what can be done about all this, and I want to talk about how to make my contribution of what I would consider discernment to help people understand how to move forward and how to understand what's happening today, February 5th, 2019, and understand where this is all going and where it could go. The potential of where it could go could be very positive for everybody, or almost everybody, sorry. Even Bernie Sanders. There we go. Baby blue. You know, his Bernie bus. And if those of you think I'm cherry picking this, I'm not. I'm not cherry picking any of this. So this is something that everybody needs to keep in mind. And we all have we all know Hillary Clinton. And we're all supposedly stronger together. Baby blue on top, not at the bottom on top. Okay? And the majority of her life, the majority of her life, when she does major political events, she wears crystal blue or a form of crystal blue. That's why I showed you the slide of those nine shades, okay? Because people are going to say, well, Ewan's one color. There's all kinds of versions of it. Even her bus is baby blue. Now, I have another section below on my home page that shows all the politicians from New Zealand, from England, from the EU that uses baby blue throughout the Commonwealth. And, 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 but here is with the U.S., so I'm just sticking with them for right now. So even on her cover of her book, when she does speeches at $5,000 a minute, I think at one point she was earning $5,000 a minute. She is uh, basically your U.N. ambassador politician in the US but she's running as a democrat not complicated this is really straightforward so i have the nasdaq here but you see the nypd let's go back see the nypd new york police department pretty gosh darn close and even the police cars for many years even up to this day now it's a lot fewer but for many years they sort of sported they were jet setting the UN blue. Okay, so I'm showing you older models so you don't think that, uh, uh, you know, I'm full of it. Here's a more recent model. Here's an even more recent model. Okay, there's multiple shades of UN blue. New York City is a UN city. The headquarters of the UN is there. I mean, I, I, I can't get more obvious than that. So... You know, there are other UN cities around the world, but the main one is, is, is New York, okay? So, Apple. 
Now, there are other entrance signs that Apple has that, that aren't blue, baby blue, but there are several of them that are predominantly baby blue. I saw one once that was red, and I think it was a different kind of campus. It was like something, you know, when you go to a campus and you see the main building and then the secondary building, I think this is the primary color for the main building. So there's always a code. There's always a hierarchy for the color, uses of colors. And this is going to be one of the, hopefully one of the most important contributions I make in my entire life, more than any other presentation I ever will make on any kind of research that I do is the international color code system, which I will do with pictures. I did it with audio, and that just doesn't make the cut. But even Apple, so, this, so getting back to the colors, color usage is very important. This all, this all comes from the military, and it all comes from the international global elite. Somehow signed off, they probably had psychiatrists. I know one of the main people who helped found the United Nations was a, was a Canadian psychiatrist. I forget his name, Christopher something. And as I'll remember, I'll talk about another presentation. So baby blue is not by chance. It's not an accident. Even media matters. You know, everybody's uh, humming and hawing about George Soros and media matters, and he's financing it. This is one of their documents that they're using. And I didn't put it in this presentation, but it's right below on my home page, the Crystal Blue Persuasion, the United Nations Media Conglomerate, CNN, their main headquarters in Atlanta, Georgia. Their front door is baby blue. They have a baby blue square at their front headquarters. And inside the baby blue square, crystal blue persuasion, is the red CNN logo. And Ted Turner gave a billion dollars to the United Nations. So, the, uh, so CNN has now become a UN damage control media center for the UN. And it's also, when it's not doing damage control, it doubles as a tabloid for the American people, for the U.S. citizens. But when it's time to vote, it's time to use Smartmatic. And Smartmatic is a corporation that uh, is involved with the voting process technologically, and they're not using this color by accident. Even MIT. I could do a whole presentation on MIT, but MIT... I think was founded, if I, my memory serves me correctly, in 1861. Uh, that was um, about nine years before the U.S. became a corporation. And the colors here basically tell me the whole story. It uh, was not designed to be for the American people. It was designed to be for the international world government infrastructure. And uh, they're extremely successful, these people. And those who work hard there and they've, they've dedicated their lives to science and technology, kudos, tip my hat off to them. But they don't fully understand the scope, the geopolitical scope of what they're doing, who they're serving, who they're working for. And they don't understand the, the, the outlines of, of world government. They're just really, really, really good at what they do. So that's basically uh, the, the, just sort of a recap was able to get through this particular uh, session here but the nine shades of the UN blue and here's the UN in New York City with the baby blue so this is something that I want to encourage everybody to think about this material uh, do your homework uh, Jordan Maxwell taught me well and other other great teachers have taught me well uh, that I've looked for it's not just Jordan. There are many other people I've listened to. And what I do is I take what I really appreciate from them. I try to take as many facts as I can from them, double check it. I build my own truth. I build my own reasoning and my own discernment. And I try to stay away from pitfall you know, belief systems as much as I can. I, I make mistakes like anybody else. And I want to let you know that this information is the precursor. I should probably do a 10-part series. This would be the first one if you're in a north if, – even if you don't live in the U.S. You need to understand this because when you start looking at the social credit system, which for those of you who have never heard of the social credit system, everything you do outside of work 
everything that you do that's in a legal lifestyle is going to be attached to your uh, to your financial credit score. So you pay your bills on time. You could be a really, really nice guy and, and pay your bills on time, or you could be basically almost a really bad person and still pay your bills on time, still have a high score. With the social credit system that's already implemented in China, whatever behavior you have, what you buy, what you say to people, who you associate with will give you a score. It won't just be your financial history. It'll be about who you are, who you call. And if you're a bad, bad citizen, you end up on a blacklist. You can't take a train. You can't take a plane. You can't travel internationally. You can't send your children to private school. You can't rent an apartment. You end up on a blacklist. Well, this is the infrastructure that's going to moderate the entire world's uh, citizenry on all these corporate co corporations around the world that we call countries. And this is all blessed and approved for by the Vatican, by the Holy Father and all the cardinals. And they have this social doctrine that's coming out. And maybe I can spend the second hour, I can show you examples of how the social credit system, where it comes from, how it's going to be put into play, and how it's directly connected to the United Nations. It doesn't mean people who are in the military and intelligence are all bad and they're all evil. No, there's. I have families who've been in, in, in the military, and uh, and and they care about America. They care about the American people, and they, they don't want wars around the world. And the reason why their voice is silenced is because there's two business models. There's the U.S. model, and then there's the international U.N. model, and people don't understand there's two. That's why there's that conflict. So I'm not belittling people who want to defend their country defend America. And America is the key to changing the outcome of a very sad outcome for the human family where many, many people will lose their lives and have difficulty making ends meet. So I just want to say that the current administration of the United States may be looking at all these facets. I don't know. But I think that the current uh, U.S. president has something to offer. And he's been making a lot of moves or he's withdrawing from UNESCO and withdrawing from the TPP. So I'm wondering if it's more the U.S. model he's interested in versus the global model. He even said it in the U.N. speeches. So, <clears throat> so this is something to keep in mind. Now, I'm not saying I'm endorsing him. I'm just saying keep an eye because if you prefer the U.S. model, then U.S. will keep its sovereignty. And if you're going to end all these endless wars, that means there could be more peace for the world. So it doesn't mean everything's perfect and there's no other problems still going on. 5G needs to be investigated. Social credit needs to be investigated. But I really think there's a chance that the U.S. can recapture some of its sovereignty and maybe people can see both business models and start making educated decisions instead of gut emotional. So we'll come back in the second hour. Check out Jordan Maxwell's show. Check out JeffreyMatt.com, and we'll be right back. Thanks for staying with us. institution american freedom radio have you experienced the miracle of cbds they can help you reduce suffering reduce stress help you sleep better modulate inflammation yeah. in the body and is absolutely safe meta hemp solutions offers a radically innovative approach to cbds for exceptional Danny. results stop suffering and reduce 
Yeah, yeah we're up. Oh. Yeah, Jeff, we didn't know you were going to do two hours, but that's okay. Um, well, I. I, I So anyway, I'm going to go ahead and let the break play through, and we'll start you up for the second hour. Go go take a quick break. Thanks. Sorry about that. I didn't realize it. No worries. TAHempSolutions.com or call 833-858-7500. Suffer no more. Get rid of the stress and sleep better. Get our product now at MetaHempSolutions.com. That's MetaHempSolutions.com. Are the trials of modern day living getting to you? Feeling tired all the time with no energy? Is proper nutrition a challenge? Having trouble sleeping? All of these evils, sleeplessness, tiredness, poor nutrition, and stress wreak havoc on our bodies and minds. Enerfood, our incredible organic superfood, has been here to save your life day by day for over 14 years. With the densest nutrition on the planet, Enerfood is filled with 20 superfoods and super herbs designed to cure the evils of modern life. Enerfood will turn you into a superhero and your family and friends will notice. Don't you want that get up and go feeling you need to seize the day? Why wait? Try it today and start feeling great again. Order now at www.enterfood.com and use the code TR15 for 15% off or call 866-762-9238 to place your order by phone. Use code TR15 for 15% off Enerfood at www.enerfood.com. When the weapons of mass destruction turned out not to be true, I expected the American people to rise up. They didn't. Then, when the Abu Ghraib torture thing surfaced and it was revealed that our government participated in rendition, a practice where we kidnap people and turn them over to regimes who specialize in torture, I was sure then the American people would be heard from. We stood mute. Then came the news that we jailed thousands of so-called terrorist suspects, locked them up without the right to a trial or even the right to confront their accusers. Certainly, we would never stand for that. We did. And now it's been discovered the executive branch has been conducting massive illegal domestic surveillance on its own citizen, you and me. And I at least consoled myself that finally, finally, the American people will have had enough. Evidently, we haven't. In fact, if the people of this country have spoken the messages, we're okay with it all. You're listening to AmericanFreedomRadio.com, the network who perseveres in delivering intelligent debate, constructive dialogue with true independence. The freedom to broadcast the truth is not free at all. So what is American Freedom Radio worth to you? The empowering information with fun, honest and pure integrity behind it provides an example to follow. Friendships to flourish with the moral altruism that pulls no punches. The hosts sacrifice and show remarkable discipline in their duty to deliver quality radio and service to the community with strength, wisdom and loyalty. The founders of AFI wish to thank you personally for sharing your views and insights to make the best radio and alternative media. Now it's time for you to give something back and play a vital role in the future of America. Be as generous with us as we've been with you. Click on the donate banner at AmericanFreedomRadio.com or volunteer by emailing AmericanFreedomRadio at Ymail.com. Vaccine, psychotropic drugs and artillery batteries not included. Launch sequence initiated. We're now in the approach phase. Everything looking good. Leading remote control. Leading control is good. Five, right experience American Freedom Radio You want answers? I want the truth! You can't handle the truth! We know the air is unfit to breathe and our food is unfit to eat 
We sit in the house and slowly the world we're living in is getting smaller and all we say is please at least leave us alone in our living rooms. Let me have my toaster and my TV and my steel belted radios and I won't say anything. Just leave us alone. In order to force the president's hand and compel him to do what we hired him to do, which is run the government within the confines of the Constitution and only with the money he collects from taxes and other fees. Well, you're absolutely right. You know, what we have to look at is the president is the chief executive officer of this corporation called the United States of America. So the president is the chief executive officer of this corporation called the United States of America. So the president is the chief executive officer of this corporation called the United States of America. Can you handle the truth? Welcome to the Jordan Maxwell Show. Welcome back, everybody, to the Jordan Maxwell Show. I'm your guest host, Jeffrey Matt, and I'm just delighted that you're still with me t this evening. I'm filling in for Jordan. He's not with us uh, this week in particular, and it's my first time doing a video presentation this evening, so I'm really, really happy about it. And I spent the first hour talking about how the United Nations and, and the United States are two corporations turning into one. And... I, my research has led me to believe that the United States is being dissolved into, absorbed into the United Nations. Eventually, the, U, the United States would cease to exist or it would collapse. And, uh, and then uh, the UN would have been safe from, from all harm and it would have just emerged and taken over completely. Now that the biggest uh, player in the game has been removed, excuse me. So I spent the first hour talking about that. And I really believe that the current administration right now is more, and he said it himself, the, you know, the President Trump said that he's into nationalism versus uh, globalism. So a lot of decisions that he's made in the last two years have been designed to protect the, this U.S. sovereignty, to create an environment where the U.S. doesn't cave, it doesn't die as a corporation. It's not only in bankruptcy, but it it, it actually comes out of it or it could, can go in the direction of that. Uh, so if you uh, do vote, uh, keep in mind that both sides, Republicans and Democrats for many, many decades, the majority of the people at the top, not all of them, not all, have been promoting the United Nations. George Bush Sr. didn't have a lot of this color stuff during his campaigns, but he did a little bit, and I'll show it to you tonight, but the UN Blue uh, is being used in political campaigns for Democrats in the United States and the conservative movement uh, in the Commonwealth, okay? But UN Blue has been uh, basically a color that's being prepared for the, the world's people, particularly in North America, particularly in the United States and Canada, but around the world through corporations it's to help condition young people, children, teenagers, young adults, young professionals, uh, senior citizens, everybody to see the color UN blue everywhere. And it just becomes normal and it becomes desensitized. And it's just not a big deal if the UN comes in and takes over. You've been looking at that color for the last 30 years. So there is a bit. And on my website, jeffreymatt.com, J-E-F-F-R-E-Y. M A T T E dot com on my home page called UN World Business. You can scroll down and see another slide presentation that I did called UN Blue, a big trend hidden in plain sight subconsciously. So people are going to say, well, you know, cherry picking, but I spent a whole hour with you in the first hour trying to show you that it's not cherry picking. So here's the UN. Uh, with its blue, and that's how I ended the, the first hour. And here are the blue helmets for the UN, you know, peacekeepers. And here are the shades that I was saying. That's not just one particular shade of UN blue. There's nine versions of it. And here's a, 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 a blueprint for corporate sustainability leadership. So they put this around the world, and different large corporations will sort of tap into this information that was put together. 
Uh, and, and the land and the headquarters of the UN is in New York City. Donated, the land was donated by the Rockefellers. And so the the sort of the in the the big club that that you and I aren't in, well, they know about this color scheme, and that includes Microsoft. So even in Africa, they they, they have this issue. Excuse me. If you have Windows, eight point one, ten. No, Windows ten. If you're you if you work for Salesforce, they're not using that color by accident. Big big corporation, Dropbox. Again, there's multiple shades of UN blue. Twitter. All globalist world government, United Nations. Skype, same thing. <clears throat> you know, it's not it's not an accident. People aren't running around in the offices with cans of baby blue paint and it all splatters all over it. No, no. It's everywhere. It's just people aren't seeing it. Even PayPal. Now, I, I here's the thing. I don't know Elon Musk personally. I know he's a co-founder. Uh, I don't know if he's into the UN world government stuff, but somebody on his advertising team or mar marketing team knows all about it. I mean, again, this is something I mentioned in the first hour. I had to learn this the hard way. I don't want to pass judgment on an individual man or woman unless there's an unbelievable pattern that just reflects is super obvious um, that they're into this. Okay, because some people they go into things they don't realize, they make mistakes, and then they 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 make a change, right? Some people they know exactly what they're getting involved with, like George Bush Senior. There is no doubt he's a UN president okay this is not complicated he's a UN president as a matter of fact I'm going to go down temporarily by the way Washington DC is a Vatican outfit it's it, that's they call it the National Mall outside of the main building and uh, that's a triple crown for the, the the Pope we can go over that some other time but there's a particular segment here that I wanted everybody to see. I just added this not even uh, 48 hours ago, less than maybe 24. Here's George Bush Sr. who uh, just by magical chance is wearing, you see the UN blue colors, the different shades? There it is. Okay, and so he's, uh, he's Big Daddy on Foreign Affairs and Foreign Affairs is, is the United Nations and he, he's the one who made the speech that's saying it's the new world order. And everybody forgot the last part where it says a credible United Nations. Everybody's worried about the new world order and satanic and all this stuff. That's a front, folks. That's a front. So you got to keep in mind that they, 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 Hollywood, they made a Hollywood move by telling you it's all demons and everybody's dancing with demons, you know, in back rooms and, and all this stuff. If they do the rituals, that's just to keep people afraid and to lock in the power structure. So that's how you get keep people under control. Here is George Bush Sr., 41, in a U.N. train specifically dedicated to him. There it is. I didn't make this up. It's in your face. You know, but back in the day when he was applying... To become the president, you see that baby blue tag on the top of the cigarette pack? That's not an accident. That's not a mistake. That's not two marketing people falling all over each other and accidentally a blue baby blue tab landed on the top of the cigarette pack. That ain't it. So there are hidden trends that I'm trying to present to you to help you understand this is not an accident. This is not a mistake. This is well coordinated, and now you're part of the inside understanding of this. Okay, it didn't cost you a dime; it only cost you a little bit of your time. I'm asking for nothing. I just want you to, you know, to be aware of it. And before we get to the social credit, I want you to see how UN Blue is being peppered in to your life, my life, everywhere. Okay, PayPal's got it. It's everywhere. It's not just one, one sign. AT and T, Big Daddy. Okay, they're totally involved with this, and uh, it's you know that it is what it is, and AT&T's logos are obviously 
pepper with baby blue. Okay, so it's not just one picture by total random accident. There it is. It's everywhere. Even their repair trucks and their service trucks. You know, if you're an employee, do you honestly think that that gentleman or that lady professional who are going out trying to repair and solve problems, do you think they understand the significance of that color on their own work service vehicle, commercial vehicle? I really, really doubt it. Direct TV, want to bring the message to the world, not just the Zimbabwe, Amazon Alexa, just by magical chance, you know, Amazon, A to Z, A to Z, they got, they got everybody. Look at that beautiful baby blue. Now, I know it, ro- it radiates different colors, but they're advertising experts. The ones who I have their color code, but they're paid retarded amounts of money. And then they get to they get everybody to grovel to them. Oh, my God, you're a marketing guru making millions of dollars a year. God knows for whatever. Else. This is I'm just going to make it for free. We're going to suck away all the BS and all the arrogance and all the puffery. And let's just get down to brass tacks because that's where humanity is right now. Humanity is in stage four cancer, addicted to to heroin. I'm being I'm being metaphysical when I say that. I'm not saying all the people in the U.S., the American people, which are corporate U.S. citizens. I'm talking about if I were to explain how the United States stands right now as a corporation, it's I would equivalent I would make an equivalent estimation as a patient who is stage four cancer in the ICU of a hospital who's addicted to opioids, who's in severe withdrawal and is at the last stages and they're waiting for a pastor or a priest to come in to make do their final rites. That's where the U.S. is right now. That doesn't mean that won't change or that there's a chance it can recover because there all, there's always a chance. That's the magic of being alive. That's the magic of education and that's the magic of believing in yourself and believing in something that makes sense and believing in your not only in yourself but believing in having a better life for you and for everybody else and not only your children but for everybody and so this is a, a pattern that's everywhere in society that people aren't paying attention to in the advertising and i want to take a multi-million dollar supposedly educated person who who supposedly is a god in their field and i'm going to take me and just throw it out there for free. Enjoy. So there you go. Because I don't think it's fair that someone can abuse the ignorance of everybody else because the education system is common core in the U.S. and it's, it's very similar around the rest of the world where they don't teach you knowledge, they teach you behavior. That's the whole point of common core is to steer you away from knowledge and to behavior. You better do as I say or else you're fired, you know. So, and then you better fall in line or else you'll be blackballed. So these, these are the kinds of mindsets that need to be shattered because living in a world with arrogant, pompous individuals top down that they're in the club and they don't even realize they're not in it. They're not in it. Even the people who put these marketing campaigns, you're not in the club. Here it is, Alexa with their advertising and Amazon. Here's the echo. And you can't get more obvious than this. For those of you who've owned a cell phone, almost everybody, and owns some sort of Android device, this used to be the color for a while. Not all, now it's changed. This used to be the color when you drag down your top bar to uh, manipulate uh, the features on your phone. No, I already went over the intelligence community using baby blue. Uh, and you know, blockchain engineers and block engineering and social behavior sense making. Hmm, how interesting. Everybody can go look this up in your free time afterwards. LinkedIn, you know, LinkedIn. Here's another one of those global it, it corporations. It is global, okay? It's not in your little village, it's global. And they understand 
that if you're going to be part of the, the club and they're in it and you're not and I'm not, they're going to use that color. Okay. Siemens has been around for a long time, long before it was popular. And there they are. These are just basic examples. And then people will say, well, all these other companies don't use it. You know, are they, aren't they part of this new world order? Yeah, they might be. But there's a handful of corporations that really are sort of the big daddies. It's like a, if you go to a picnic or maybe a best way I could describe is if you work in an office where there's a lot of people and they make an outing for everybody in the office and they create teams to some sort of team building activity and they have all these little team leaders. Uh, if there's 50 employees, they'll make five team leaders. They'll make five teams of 10. Those five team leaders, those would be the corporations that are handpicked out of the all 50 that basically run all, those five run all 50. Well, here are examples of the top dogs that the, the globalists choose. I mean, you know, do I need to explain myself when I look at Siemens here? The whole building's baby blue. NASDAQ I talked about. So this is, uh, you know, this is a little bit of a recap from the first hour. Goldman Sachs, I mean, they made their partners with the, with, with the Vatican. And the United, I'm sorry, the United Nations, but as well with the Vatican. And we're going to go into the Vatican here soon, the social credit. But they're partners. And so International Monetary Fund, they, they're using it too. Uh, the United Nations System for Chief Executive Board for Coordination. There's that UN blue at the top. And, uh, you know, there's there's a NSA, of course, Cyber, Cyber Command. And so when you join these outfits... Uh, and you want to protect America. You want to you want to do the right thing because your parents took care of you. If you're lucky enough to have parents throughout your childhood, some people, unfortunately, not everybody has the same outcome in life. We're all dealt a different hand. But if you're lucky enough to have parents and you have a, a, a decent life and you have a chance to do something for your, your corporate country, uh, you want to serve and you want to make good money and you want to be respected, I 100% understand why you want to join uh, the military, the NSA, I 100% I understand that now. But the thing is, is that when you join, you don't know about the second business model. And because they don't talk to you about it, they don't show it to you, there's nothing to say. It's sir, yes, sir, and end of story. You'll never know about it. And so when you go through your career, you don't understand why this stuff, so, these weird decisions are being made. These weird programs are being rolled out. These outlandish laws that make no sense, that are counterintuitive, goes against common sense. The reason why is because there's two businesses fighting it out, and they're not telling you about the second business model. So if you have integrity and you have decency and you're an honorable person and you want to join the NSA, you can but you're going to be fighting the second business model from the moment you're recruited to the moment you're dead. That's the bottom line. You're going to have to, you're going to have to support both business models and the superior business model, the one that's trumping the other one, is the UN model. I mean, this isn't complicated. This is super straightforward. It's too bad that I had to be one of the only people to talk about this because this is not fun. And the smart cities that are coming, they don't call it smart by accident. They call it smart because they don't want to scare you because they know when you read a newspaper, the English language or the language level is roughly third grade. Okay, That doesn't mean everybody's stupid. It doesn't mean nobody knows anything. Everybody has their, their fingers up their nose. What it means is that they understand psychology and they have the most senior people. They have trillions of dollars at their disposal over decades, and you don't. And so they know what to do. They did all the homework without your knowledge. And they know how to – they don't call it AI city. It's too scary. All the baby boomers would say, no, 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 there's something wrong. So they come out with a very docile word called smart. Look at that beautiful baby blue. Nobody's paying attention. Smart cities, Expo World Forum. So you're going to go towards universal basic income. What is that? For those of you who aren't familiar with universal basic income – I'm going to give you the real skinny on it. Artificial intelligence and robotics are going to dominate the workforce around the world, 
And Fortune magazine came out with an article a couple years ago saying that 800 million jobs are going to be possibly eliminated to automation and artificial intelligence. That's roughly around 73 million in the United States in the next 13 years. Now, the existing current president has done something that I would never thought was possible or ever would happen in my lifetime. I thought the end of humanity was going to probably come in less than 100 years. Basically, everybody, everybody's just going to go not knowing any different. Just like when you go to a farm and you see all the cows brought in to be executed, deterred, to be sent to the In-N-Out Burger or whatever your local chain hamburger shop is or your local supermarket, the cows don't know they're going to the supermarket. I thought everybody was just going to go under, everything's going to, you know, humanity, the U.S. is going to die as a corporation. It's going to be taken, the full takeover is going to happen by the U.N. And then when people are out of the work, they, you know, Mark Zuckerberg and the gang uh, were talking about basic income, universal basic, basic income, excuse me, where the government will give you free money because you can't work because the robot can do eight times more than you and me. So we're all going to be facing universal basic income, but what an interesting choice of colors to put that out. And it's going to lead to the social credit, and the social credit is something that uh, I'm going to get into very, very uh, soon here. These are just corporations that are chosen uh, to participate in helping bring together uh, the international United Nations network using this color. Now, I understand I'm going through these pictures quickly. You can always go back to the archives of American Freedom Radio. Don't forget to consider, if you're in a position to support American Freedom Radio, I would if I were you. And it's not just because I don't like supporting and asking for stuff and promoting anything. I don't put my name on anything. And people who've known me for years, I put my name on nothing unless I believe in it. Just like the material I'm putting out. So if I'm saying American Freedom Radio has something to offer... It's because it does. That's the bottom line. It's the same thing with Jordan Maxwell. I couldn't have been uh, reached this stage if it wasn't for the caliber and the, 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 the incredible insight and dedication and commitment of a man, of a titan, 60-year educator titan in the world, on the world scene of alternative education, real education, real knowledge. None of this would have been possible for me if it hadn't been for all my teachers, my family, my friends, and Jordan Maxwell and American Freedom Radio uh, offered me a chance to present this information. So kudos to them. And kudos to you for listening in. So there are some more corporations that are doing this, and Google Fiber, and you know, you go to these conferences, and everybody, oh, I have a degree. You, you too? You have a degree? Do you know about the, 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 the club? No, I, I don't even know what you're talking about. Well, you're not in it. You're not in the club. You don't know what's going on. You're just sitting there. You don't realize who you're working for. You don't realize where your paychecks are coming from. You don't know what's going on, champ. So, you know, I'm not saying these people are bad. They're probably all sensational people. They're great to have a nice lunch with and talk with. But I'm interested in knowing what's really going on. I'm not interested in going wading through pools of, of, of individuals who think they understand they don't. You can tell right away. So this is something that I want to do is try to bring insight and potential understanding to those, only those who want to know. And trust me, it's not a lot. So you're very special to me. You're very important to me. That's why I'm putting this information out there for you. So here are examples of service trucks all over the place, all over the United States. They're all sporting the UN Blue, and it's Google, okay? Even their maps, even Disney, right? You know, they're part of the gang. They're part of the club. They're in the club. They're in the club. They're in the club. Here's some more examples of it. And uh, everybody's seen this one, right? You know, it's the baby blue. I didn't for a long time. Pixar. Here we go. There's some more examples. Here's The Incredibles. Oh, okay. And this movie, The Incredibles 2, if you think, oh, it's it's Frozone. 
and 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 he's freezing and there's crystal blue ice and all that stuff. No, no, no. The UN is a main theme in this movie. The United Nations is a main part of the plot. The United Nations. There it is. Impregnating the subconscious mind of children. And the U.S. is going down the toilet and it's gone forever. The founding fathers would be rolling in their graves if they knew what uh, the transition of the corporate merger, the loss of the republic, turning into a corporate democracy, and then being absorbed and dissolved into the United Nations. Okay, I didn't do all this. I'm just telling you about it. I'm not saying uh, 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 anything. I'm just showing you an observation. Fisher Price, Hot Wheels, Cisco. So that's basically the scoop when it comes to the UN Blue. Okay, even some of your browsers on your computers, some of them now, when you highlight the text, it's baby blue. This is all subconscious. So now that we've done that, let's take a quick look at how the United States Capitol is a Vatican operation. Now, this is pattern recognition again, folks. There is no white paper sitting on the internet that you can download and says the Vatican, uh, the Washington, D.C., the District of Columbia is a Vatican outfit. It's a Vatican franchise strip mall for all business in, 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 in the U.S. And here's the, it's basically the triple crown. The triple crown. So I have to go through reverse engineering. Here's the triple crown. There's the triple crown. There we go, folks. That's not Jeffrey Matt there saying that's the Pope. But it started off with one crown. And throughout history, it went to two. And finally, it made it to three. It must weigh a ton. Maybe that's some... Some people help him hold his head up. Must weigh a ton. There's that triple crown. Now, these triple crowns are all over the world. These are business outfits. There's Argentina. And there's different versions and different forms. Here, I think this is Cuba. There it is. There's the triple crown. There's a triple crown. Now, I have a whole segment of... Two, two dozen capital buildings in, in many states of the United States that has this. This is not an accident. This is not Jeffrey Matt who got the billions of dollars and zoned it and planned it. This is just pattern recognition. Okay? And they're all over the United States. They're all over the United States. Each state has a different, not every, not all 50 states has them, but at least, uh, I'd say at least half, minimum half. They all have a triple crown uh, capital building of some kind. So this is a Vatican outfit. So the United States is a Vatican operated business corporation. Okay, and their franchise is the United States. And so they want to get rid of the U.S. corporation, so they started the U.N., Okay, they got some real uh, clever tricksters like the Rockefellers and the Rothschilds and the other rest of the gang, and they came up with a business model that would rival and be competitive to the U.S. Incorporated and then absorb and dissolve it and there'd be nothing left. And as soon as the U.S. is gone, New Zealand, Australia, every th 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 there's no competition. Everybody else is just going to fall like a weakling. If the U.S. gets sick, the rest of the world, if the U.S. gets a cold, the rest of the world gets pneumonia on the edge of death. So once the U.S. is gone, the U.N., it's, it's like it's, it's candy time. So here are all these capitals and all these different states with a triple crown. And it's important to understand that this is not an accident. And they're all over the place. Little sh the different shapes and sizes. And uh, it just goes on and on and on, state after state after state. And there are certain countries that have different capital buildings. 
And uh, so basically, this is the scoop for, I think this is in California, uh, around uh, the U.S., but this is basically a Vatican operation. North and South America is a Vatican operation. That's the bottom line, okay? It's not some uh, YouTube video that I watched with eerie uh, Satan music in the background and then an endless string of Bible pr prophecies that don't explain everything. It, I respect the Bible and I respect the Creator but they don't link it correctly. And so I get tricked into thinking it's it's just, it's a business model, okay? And the darkness and the satanic element that's been peppered throughout the alternative movement, unfortunately, eventually it'll be understood that it was ho mostly Hollywood, okay? But right now I'm going to be probably persecuted for saying that. I'm not interested in the devil. I'm not interested in Satanism. I'm not interested in, 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 in death and mayhem and people rejoicing over it. Not me. I'm not interested in it. But what I have come to understand is that you behave really, really bad and you're rewarded for it. You're a perfect candidate for the, the satanic uh, group. And so they have all these crazy rituals and all this stuff, you know, to, 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 to make you think that it's real. It's not. So now we talked about the, the Vatican. We only have maybe 25 minutes left, but I'm going to talk about the next phase of where humanity is going. Okay? And it's not just China. For those of you who don't know about the social credit system, take your Apple Pay on your phone, your Android, your iPhone, and it's going to record your voice. It's going to record your movements through GPS. It's going to record everything you do in your house with your husband, with your wife, with your children, all the arguments, all the, the stress, the depression. If you have suicidal thoughts, it's all going to go to med medical uh, accounts. It's going to go to insurance companies, and you will get a number for your behavior, for how you live your life. If you only eat hot dogs, you will get a low rating because you're not eating healthy enough. Okay? So right now, if you want to eat hot dogs for 35 years, you can eat the hot dogs for 35 years. Nothing's going to happen to you. You'll just get sick from eating hot dogs. But now you're going to have an extra uh, a layer of, of criteria that you have to live by. It's like a job when you're outside of your job. Your job outside of your work is to follow the government's al AI algorithms to be a good citizen. Now in China, this started in 2013. Most people heard about it in 2014. And there's a TV show called Black Mirror, season three, episode one, called Nosedive. Uh, again, I know I'm going through this quickly, but if you watch that episode, you'll understand what I mean. Okay? And I'm going to take that episode and I'm going to put it on night. I'm going to supercharge that information and I'm going to bring it to you in the real world. So China has a system where they, they went from no running water in the 60s to super AI metropolises with hunt for over 400 million cameras in less than 30 years. You don't build for 1.4 billion people. You can't monitor 1.4 billion overnight that quick. So instead of building up the credit bureaus, they created a digital ID for you. And they monitors everything. And then if you buy too many video games, you spend not enough time with your husband or wife, you get a, a, a score. And that's the way to, to lower corruption, supposedly, help the environment, all this stuff. It's a control grid. But it's not just for China. Everybody's relaxed and comfortable. Oh, I'm not in China. Everything's cool. It's not cool. 2020 is going to be live for all 1.4 billion. And China is not the devil, by the way. The Chinese government's not the devil. It's the people who put in the business model that were cool with the whole thing. Those are the people we need to, to really put our eyes on. The Chinese people are just going with the flow. Just like I can't stop anything, you can't stop anything. You have to look at it from a business perspective. If you're going to deal with me, you're going to listen to any of my research, I'm going to harp and harp on the business model, not uh, outlandish Hollywood stuff. It's the business model because if you think in Hollywood terms, then you can't act uh, accurately. You can't make seasoned, discerned, uh, discernible decisions. You can't understand what's going on, so you make poor choices. And then you have to just follow the rules or else you don't make it. You can't make your rent. So the social credit system is going to be a global infrastructure. It's not just going to be China. 
<clears throat> so how am I able to conclude this? The social doctrine compendium, the social doctrine of the church. Now, if you read through this, I haven't read through the whole thing. I've read some excerpts from it, and I can tell you this. It's not going to tell you, oh, my God, X paragraph and X line. It says we're going to dominate the world through the social credit system. It's going to say something to the effect, I think it's section 52, something about uh, 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 helping determine the social interaction between man and man. And it's a really loose, loosey-goosey information, but that's not the point. The Vatican is, is, is a smart cookie. It's been around long before I was born. It's going to be around after I'm gone. Hopefully, it can change its business model. Okay, If it changes business model, humanity has a chance. If it doesn't change its business model in less than 100 years, we're gone. What we consider life on Earth, what we consider a normal life, that's gone. It's going to be completely replaced uh, by uh, AI smart cities. And AI is not really designed for us. It's designed for synthetic life, which is a completely separate topic. So they give you the Jesus version here, where very few people can understand. And they have 53 miles of information. It's called the, 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 the Vatican Archive. And uh, you can't get in there, and neither can I. And if you have 53 miles of book and documents, that means that they have an advantage over everybody on the face of the earth. 300 cardinals and one pope and uh, their underlings, the, the, the employees. And, uh, and I have to say, I have, must respect any man who is honest and has integrity and believes in God and wants to serve uh, humanity and serve God. I have no problem with that. Again, it's, it's the same thing with the military and intelligence. It's a double business model. You go in as I've met people who have become priests, and I respect them for wanting to help and serve and be part of the community where they feel they're doing the best they can, they're, they're living the best, highest caliber life. But when they get in, they don't have the heart to tell you that there's a second business model, and they don't know what to call it, so they call it corruption. They call it the work of the devil. But it's a business. And if you think I found this Forbes magazine by magical chance by accident this took me many many months to find this it's in argentina and it says that the pope is the C the new ceo i'm translating it to english from spanish okay and he's the he's the holy father and part of the of, at least for the united states i don't know about the commonwealth but it wouldn't surprise me it's the same in the commonwealth canada new zealand australia uk and so on and so forth Parents Petra is, a, is, a, is, is something in the United States which allows the government to take on the role as the father or as the parent, a legal father, a legal guardian. And so most people think, well, this is in case a child is sick or ill or being abused. Then the whole point of Child Protective Services is to take the child away from that horrible situation. But they, you know, you know how lawyers are and legal infrastructures and the dual business plan. They're going to leave a door open. They're going to say individual. Not just a child or an individual. Individual could be a 98-year-old man. It could be anything. So that's their infrastructure. And then, of course, I was brought up thinking that the, the church was there to only help me with my spiritual guides. This is why would he need to speak to tech leaders around the world? And then in his speech to them on Fortune magazine, Time Global, Time Forum, sorry, he does a speech to the uh, a global business leaders. So, you know, supposedly there's a separation between church and state. Well, it looks like there isn't one here. And in one part of his speech, he's saying the 21st century challenge forging a new social compact. Hmm, how interesting. Well, just in case you think I'm making this up, here's a patent of one of the features and one of the aspects of, of the social credit system. It's one of the foundations for Facebook. So this is not a wishful thinking from Jeffrey Matt. This is the result of dedication, of research, being in the company of, of, of what I would consider many teachers. One of them I have high regard for is Jordan Maxwell. And I was wondering why in the world does the Pope have to meet Mark Zuckerberg? I thought he was just going to help me with maybe communion 
or saying my Hail Marys or helping me with my wedding or if I, if I were to get married or if I were Catholic or if I were even Protestant, I understand there's a Reformation issue. But uh, why does he need to meet the head of Facebook? That, that, you know, that doesn't jive based on what I was taught in school. Again, this is not school. What I was taught was not designed to be knowledge. It's designed to be behavioral. Okay, don't worry about what's really going on. Don't worry about how things really work. Are you going to be a thinker? And even Rockefeller said, I don't want a nation of thinkers. That's not Jeffrey Math. That's Rockefeller. You can go look up that quote. So I'm paraphrasing a little bit. I don't want a nation of thinkers. So here's the thinking part that most people aren't aware of. He's meeting tech giants, and then he gives him his little employee evaluation. Uh, even though Mark probably may or may not understand he's an employee of the Vatican. He, if he does, uh, then he does. But if he doesn't, uh, then um, I, I feel bad for him because he doesn't know what he's doing. And he lives – He one of his quotes on March 5th, uh, 2004, I'm paraphrasing. He says – you can lead an unethical life and it still be legal, right? And that's just the way I live my life. That's that's paraphrasing a quote that he said. So the Pope wants to meet a man who says, I lead an ethical life, that's just the way I live, and it's legal, uh, but uh, that's the way I lead my life. So he's meeting up with someone who has that kind of mindset. And then he goes to a commencement speech at Harvard and says it's time for our generation to define a new social contract and talks about basic income, universal basic income. I don't think he came up with that by himself on his own. I think that sort of came from his boss, El Nuevo CEO. That's my suspicion. And if I'm wrong on any of this, and maybe Mark Zuckerberg's a, a decent guy. I don't know. I haven't met him. Again, I don't want to blame or – chastise somebody who I've never met. What I want to do is I want to point out uh, the pattern recognition because people can uh, make mistakes in life and, and recover and repent. That's the point of life. If you made a mistake and you want to make a – you find out what's really going on and you change your ways, well, that's different because if I made a mistake, I would want people to give me another chance, Right? It's not just instant condemnation. Let the first person who's, who's not sinned throw the first stone. Well, I believe in second chances, but I think that this gentleman, when he makes a, a statement that I, I, I lead an unethical life, and as long as it's legal, that's just the way I, I, I lead my life, it doesn't, I don't find that very encouraging. So you can use this social credit system in America and not realize that it's being built up around you. And if you don't have a good network of friends, you may not even be able to get a loan for a car. Some people need a car to get to a job. Can you imagine having to realize later on that because of your Facebook page, you can't get money to go get a house or an apartment or really? But it doesn't stop there. Let's keep going. Let's see where this all leads. Tim Cook, a gentleman who um, took over the reins for Apple, he too went to see El Nuevo CEO and was given his sermon of some kind. And magically, Apple decided to move everything to China. And in this speech on CNN, he says, if you don't say anything, it says something. If you, see, if you don't agree with something, you have to say something. Go listen to that. I'm paraphrasing. Go listen to that because CNN is a damage control UN media center. And then when it's not doing that, it becomes a tabloid. It, it has a dual feature. They make up stories as they go along. They make it up as they go along. And... Uh, and so this is this is and people go for it, right? It's in all the airports everywhere, so it must be serious, right? But um, listen to that speech, and you'll see that this is a damage control versus a tabloid. So, Google, Apple uses Google's public cloud for iCloud. I wonder if they're connected. Well, gosh, doodles, Eric Schmidt wearing that beautiful UN blue tie. 
visiting El Nuevo CEO. Voila. Now, this is a few years before, so I don't want people to think I, I didn't understand this, but they're already in China. And again, the Chinese people and China is not the enemy. That's what the globalists want you to do. They want you to fight with each other. They want you to say, I'm a lefty, I'm a righty, I'm a Black Lives Matter, I'm an Antifa, I'm a uh, this group, I'm a uh, what's it, the white supremacist, I'm a KKK. They want everybody to fight while they corporately build up the world government and they collapse all the other countries. I mean, they're laughing. They're they're whipping out seven hundred dollar bottle of champagne, and they're laughing at these Bilderberg meetings. And everybody's oh goodness, the first thing on their agenda was populism last year in two thousand eighteen. They love populism. The more that there's a yellow vest uh, uh, fight in France and all that stuff, the faster they can pass laws that creates the legal foundation for the social credit for the entire world. The more you protest, not, not the listenership, the more people protest, the more people fight, the faster you're going to get a social credit system. Bottom line. So here's an example of an article that explains it. Your online mobile and social behavior are now data points, and governments uh, are going to give you a credit score, scoring credit worthiness. So social networks and secret societies are involved. Here are all the social networks that's an example of them. And in the U.S., you can get a reputation score already. It's already started. Okay, If you have cards with your grocery store or your pharmacy or you have points programs, air miles, what happens is every few years they go under and then they get bought out by another one and then it, it, they merge with another points program and now two points programs becomes one and they keep doing that every few years. Next thing you know, you have one card for everything. And then they attach it to your iPhone or your Android. Now you have an, a digital ID. Now they, they're rolling out biometrics, and they're all going to connect it. Next thing you know, you're in an outdoor prison. And you better not say a word. You're not going to be able to find any of this stuff on the Internet. Your only thing you're going to find on the Internet is how to make cupcakes and how to pet dogs. And that's it. Freedom or this, the, the illusion of freedom will be removed. Right now there is no freedom. There is no freedom of speech. It's coming to a close, and there's going to be a day where the, the human family wakes up. It's too late. It's over. So that's why the club is laughing. Everybody's having a great time except for the, the bottom $8 billion. So the Ch Chinese social credit system is being rolled out. Life inside the China Social Credit Laboratory, you know. And here's an example of a little bit of a chart that will help you understand how some of the basic metrics that they use to help you determine, you know, what would be considered a good score or a bad score, you know, not only for companies but for people. Corporations are going to have it too. And if you owe money, they have applications in China that can find out who's a deadbeat near you, you know. And if, if you get a call in China from someone who's on the blacklist, you can get up on a blacklist, your phone will ring differently. And if you talk to people on the blacklist, you will lose points. So what's going to happen is you're going to avoid anybody who's not above you in your score. And people who are above or beneath you in score, you're not going to want to associate with. So if you have someone in your family, maybe your wife made a mistake at her job or your husband had a blowout at work and lost his job and his score went down, you have to consider leaving him or leaving her so that you don't lose your social credit score. It's going to completely, potentially tear apart the entire human family. It also could be something that might be used for a positive. You know, if I were to implement the social credit system, if there was no choice, I would only implement it on people in the Congress, in the Senate, and uh, uh, people who were in public office. And it would be uh, extremely a tight run. So instead of having a three-day week and you get paid hundreds of thousands of dollars, and if there's a shutdown, you get a bonus, it's the opposite. You have to work for the people. You're in a public service position. You're supposed to work for the people, not for the United Nations. And the social credit would eliminate an enormous amount of corruption if it were only applied to people in public office. If you're not in public office, 
there is no social credit system. But that's just loose thinking. So we only have a few minutes left. Here are examples of the Chinese version. And if you think that it's only in China, Germany is edging towards it as well. Venezuela is trying to get it as well. And uh, the EU definitely wants it. I mean, France is really gunning for it really bad with the yellow vests. They're going to abuse, they're going to take the abuse of all the fighting and they're going to pass all these laws. And it's going to turn and get it closer and closer so that when they roll out the social credit, everybody's going to basically say this. I'm fed up of all the protesting. I'm fed up of everything. Give me a solution. They're going to say, we've been waiting for you to say that. Voila, here's your social credit. And then when everybody gets it, they're going to realize it's not as fun as they thought. Here's a Democratic campaign, a presidential candidate who says, I can't wait to put it out there. This is a watered-down version of it. And so there are other uh, corporations that have their take on what it is. But to put it all together, you need 5G, right? That's very important. And biometrics. And so when we have 5G, we're going to be living inside of a an airport scanner for the rest of our lives. That's going to injure the human biology and we're going to become infertile and we're going to have 20,000 satellites of 5G radiating around the world. And even if, there, if, even if the world is flat, which I don't know, if it was flat and there was no satellites, it's still going to be 5G anyway. So it doesn't matter whether the world's shaped like a donut or a, or a cube or a triangle, it's coming. And even if you go to your local mall, you want to get fitted for the best fit for clothes. They have a, a 5G radiation booth. You can get cancer 20, 30 years early to find out what size shirt you want to wear. Here are the corporations that are involved with the social credit. We only have a minute left, so I would just say this. You need to be aware of this stuff. Do your homework. Uh, support Jordan Maxwell. If you can, if you're in a position to, research his work, double check everything I say. I have my own power, but you have the power for you. This information is for you, and you need to double check it, and you need to go through it and understand what it is and how it's going to be everywhere. And if you're not part of the solution, then, we can, then we're going to be part of the problem. So we need to... Think positive, and education and knowledge can change everything. There is no privacy left, and we have to be careful of decentralization. Because when you decentralize the internet, and there's no place to to to, to make a complaint, then you have no recourse. So decentralized, there's a big negative to that. We have to be very careful with decentralized. Everybody should look into that. And the courts are using AI, and social credit's going to attach to it. Even 5G is going to be used in the United Kingdom to track mental patients and dementia patients. So you need to look into this. There's all kinds of companies that are using this stuff to build a social match in schools, in your churches, with your, med your medical doctors. It's just everywhere. Facial recognition at your church to see how much money you're giving to Jesus or to Allah uh, or to Yahweh. They're going to detect if you're lying 24-7 through your eyes. They're going to be able to read your, your voice through layered voice analysis to see if you're lying when you speak to your phone, to your husband, to a police officer. And uh, they can even predict where crime's going to be. And if you're in the wrong place at the wrong time, you can get arrested whether you're innocent or not. So these, this, is, this, is, this is the real deal. And so I invite everybody to look at this information. Check out my website, jeffreymatt.com. And I hope this information serves you. This is not designed to create fear. It's designed to create awareness, and it's designed to help you. So I want to thank you for your time, and uh, I want to wish everybody a great evening. Thanks again.